Monarchy, August 8th, 2014. Uh, Dan, what, do you, what are you saying about fusarium and how it spreads through chipping trees? I say this, that the fungus lives in the plants, in the woody part of the plant, in the xylem. This is a wooden cell wall and it grows in intimate relationship with the wood. And then if you take that fungus and chop up the wood into small pieces and spread it around, the fungus never had it so good. Because here it is where it always lives and a piece of wood would be most expected to be the moistest that it could be. And it should be spread around like crazy with chips, the small chips. And I never thought of it before as this. I, I never heard of anybody chipping up the wood. But I, I'm quite sure that uh, when you chop up at a, a, a tree that's infected and died, and did it relatively recently, not that it really completely did, that uh, it, it would spread. So I'm you're not surprised. You're saying that chipping is the worst thing you could do. I right? think so. No, I, I don't know. I've never seen a piece of wood chipped, uh, a tree chipped up, and how small the pieces are. But it must be powder time as well as, uh, you know, big pieces. Yeah. And remember, these, these fungus are, are microscopic in size. So a little piece of wood with a microscopic spore is not a big piece. It could blow all over. What if you catch the tree while it, the fungus is in the crown? Will the, will the trunk in, be infectious? It's not in the crown. It's in the vascular system. The whole, whole I don't know where to finally end up. But the whole tree would carry the fungus? Sure. Even at the roots or the, uh, oh, the, the lower part of it? They probably don't. They, I don't know if the roots are infected or not. I don't think they would be. Yeah. But I'm not sure. So uh, chipping the wood, particularly uh, moist wood, would be a way of uh, inoculating the neighborhood basically then, huh? Of spreading it around the, the yeah. whole neighborhood. Sure. Yeah. I don't know how, you know, I, I, I've never seen a chipped up wood. But when you say chip, obviously there's going to be some what we call sawdust, isn't it? You know, yeah. You know how how fine saw is laser yeah. wood. Well, the chip must must leave me little pieces here and there that could be blown all over. I'm not surprised then. When you first said it, it was airborne. I I just had my you know I said this can't be. But would it infect a tree that is not being trimmed? I mean, if the tree is just sitting yes, there, it could yes. still infect the tree. Yes. No, I've never seen this in a tree, but it's not unlikely that it have some part that be wounded, and that the, the sap would ooze out, and the sap would dry, and that sap could be chipped out or broken out. I, that's possible. I had no, I had no experience on this. Okay. Any other advice? Just be careful. <laughs> uh, so it is fatal. Uh, actually, yes. If a guy has a tree in his in his yard and it died, cut the darn tree down as low as you can and cut up the logs and haul it away and take the sawdust away. As sooner sooner rather than later. Yeah. 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 And what about oh, sure? Yeah. Because. The fungus can live as a saprophyte, I'm quite sure. It could live on a pile of sawdust in the yard. Yeah. And the uh, what about using fertilizers for uh, treatment or prevention of the disease? No good. So well, there's some consultants that are running around saying that they can save the tree or keep it around longer by injecting uh, high nitrate fertilizers. I don't think it works. I don't see a good reason why it should work. Yeah. But if you, if you did do that treatment and you kept the infected tree around longer, 
Would that cause it to spread well, more? Well, I would not keep the infected tree. Yeah. So no, your advice is I to... Don't think a tree, I don't think a tree has been shown to recover. Yeah. When it shows symptoms, I don't think it will recover. Yeah. No, I have no, I have no direct I have, uh, evidence on that. Once the fungus gets inside the, the trunk of a tree, it's got an incubation chamber. Yeah. It's got, you got water coming up from below, nice gentle water, <laughs> it's oozing up. It's got nutrition coming up. Why should a tree uh, get rid of it? So, what, when did the uh, disease first hit California? I don't know. I thought it came in Harbor Island and Long Beach. Do you remember telling me that? Yes. No, no I think the first one was in, uh, um, what did I say? Harbor Island? No, no. The, 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 uh, Catholic, oh, the college, uh, Laverne College, or what? Loyola. Loyola. Yeah. They had, I think they had 165 trees. Yeah. And I'm quite sure they cut them all down. Yeah. The whole thing was all one row. Of and this is before they learned the pr protocol for disinfecting their saws. Yeah. And then we, my lab heard about it, and I. Let Talbot go over there and study it, and he used it for his PhD. Yeah, that was 1979, the, the PhD, I think. It? Yeah. Is it? You and Howard Orr and Tolbert Feather yeah. were on the name. Yeah. 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 And that's where the well, infection, uh, that's where the disinfection procedure came from, out of that, his research, yeah. right? Yeah. Oh, hell yeah. Because they said, uh, like uh, uh, the island, Shelter Island. Yeah. They didn't have the epidemic that the, 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 uh, the university did. And that's when we said, hey, take those old trees out and don't spread it around. Because, uh, and Shelter Island did take the trees out. Yeah, I think they took them all out, didn't they? I don't know. It was 1979. I don't know. <laughs> so. Okay. Any other words of why wisdom? No. Okay. I'm sorry to be so vague about it. Well, that's pretty good information, Dad. Thanks a lot. Bye bye.